It is good to be gathered together on this day, on this weekend. For many of us, it's just another day. For others, it's a day of remembrance. For those of you who serve, And we know that you are remembering, remembering the ones who came home, but even more the ones who did not. For those of you who know that this is a difficult day, because for some folks, they may have survived the war, but their memories have been part of a difficult life. For those who survived and then later succumbed, today may we remember with a moment of silence and some music. Thank you for being with us today for worship. We welcome you. We believe that worship is a full body experience. So we hope that you greet God with your entire body, soul, heart, and spirit. We do want to know that you are here, so please sign, if you're worshiping with us online, Share something that amazes you about God. If you are here in the sanctuary, please sign the black pad in the pews. And this is most important today because we probably won't get to those black pads until Tuesday or Wednesday and to kind of see who was here. And so I know my memory will be shot by then. Leading in worship today, we have Bev. We have Joe, and upstairs we have Don and Chris, aided by Pastor Trish. So um, be patient with us all. It is a good day to worship. And even though it may be the veteran or the Memorial Day weekend, as gray as it is coming through those windows, we don't want to be outside anyway. So what better place to have our hearts strangely warmed than in the sanctuary. And that comment refers to the celebration on May 24th of John Wesley's conversion, as he said, when all of a sudden his faith became something that he could no longer explain with his head because his heart was strangely warm. How often do we plan and show up to worship expecting to encounter God? It feels like the right answer should be every week. But in reality, I'm sure many of us would prefer not to be scared witless by the glory of God as Isaiah was in the passage from today's Old Testament lesson. Or at the very least, we'd like some warning so that we can be prepared. And yet, isn't that at least part of what worship is about? showing up and expecting to encounter God? We certainly believe that God is ever-present, so shouldn't worship be about learning to recognize God's presence among us? Shouldn't worship be about recognizing that God is bigger than we are or can even fully know? Isn't worship about throwing open the doors of our church and our hearts to draw the circle of God's love ever bigger?
Please stand in body and spirit for the call to worship and our opening hymn. God, sometimes we show up to worship ready to encounter your presence. We know you are always with us. Sometimes we catch glimpses of you at home, work, or school, or when we are volunteering in a smile, in a gentle breeze, in the joy of being together. We know But, God, we hesitate to encounter you in all of your glory, afraid to be overwhelmed by your love and holiness. And yet, know you are always with us in the fullness of your glory. Ready our hearts today to encounter more of your glory, your love, holiness, and glory that is always present with us. Amen. And if you'd remain standing in body or spirit for our opening hymn here, it can be found in your hymnals on page 64. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Number 64.
will not have the messy moment, I do invite you to turn and greet one another with the love of Christ. Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year of the death of Uzziah, ruler of Judah, I saw Yahweh seated on a high and lofty judgment seat, in a robe whose train filled the temple. Seraphs were stationed above, each of them had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They would cry out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh omnipotent. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The doorposts and the thresholds quaked at the sound of their shouting, and the temple kept filling with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed. I have unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the ruler, Yahweh omnipotent. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding an ember which it had taken with the tongs from the altar. The seraph touched my mouth with the ember. See, it said, now that this has touched your lips, your corruption is removed and your sin is pardoned. Then I heard the the voice of the Holy One saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me. Our psalm reading this morning uh, is taken from Psalm 29 and can be found in your hymnals, number 200, or I'm sorry, 761, 761. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord, upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The Lord of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Gesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forests bare. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace.
All right, there we go. Let's pray together. Oh God, this is a day that we don't understand. Trinity Sunday, and yet we come to worship anyway. May you continue to open the doors of the mystery that is you. Amen. If you look around the sanctuary today, you see we have all kinds of symbols up. We have the red for Pentecost last week. We have the beautiful backdrop that not only reminds us of the table to which we are all invited, but it gives a little bit more color for the online folks as the camera films. We have the white drape on the cross, and we are reminded not only are we called to continue to be educated in faith, it, we are reminded of our baptism as well. And if there is any day of the year, except maybe for Pentecost, when all of the different symbols of worship need to be present, it is this day. The doctrine of the Trinity is not something that we really find in Scripture. It's something that the early church hammered out as they read passages such as the Isaiah text that Joe read this morning, or as they prayed the Psalms. The God of thunder roars, and all creation cries glory. Or even as they, re they read or heard, John, and John 3, 1 through 17, which I chose not to read today because we have read it multiple times in the past few months. In all of those scriptures, they began to get a sense that God is more and bigger than anything we can begin to understand. God is the one who is with us when we are birthed. And when we continue to be birthed, every time we wake up more and more and more to the power of God amongst us. I love it on those rare years when Trinity Sunday and Aldersgate Day kind of meld together. Because certainly, John Wesley had faith. He was not born for the first time when he had his Aldersgate experience. But that was the moment that he knew that God was more powerful, bigger, more involved than he had ever known. The Trinity, the concept of the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity, the theology of the Trinity was developed over centuries so that we, sitting here now on May 26, 2024, could continue to explore the bigness of who God is. Now, whenever I... think about amazement. I think about two events in my life. Well, three. Going backpacking in the Canadian Rockies when, in 1983, going to Israel in 1989, and in 1919, ni not 1919, good heavens. <laughs> I'm not that old, even though I feel it this week. In 2019, going to Lake Tahoe and participating in the worship design studios training that has helped inform our worship 
ever since. And as much of a photographer as I am, none of the pictures that I took in 2019 and in 1989 could begin to capture the amazement of where I was. I thought about, you know, trying to capture some of those pictures from Tahoe, and then I realized we were going to be down a person, and I wanted to be nice today. So you won't see any of those pictures on the screen. But nothing, nothing can capture the cold blueness of that lake as we flew over. And nothing can capture the grandeur of the mountains, the Sierra Nevadas that surrounded them. Nothing can capture the crisp air. Let me tell you, May in the mountains is not warm. And with the Canadian Rockies, Nothing tastes as pure, don't groan, Chris, tastes as pure as the water that at that time tested so clean, we did not even have to put chemicals in it. That we dipped down into the glacial ponds and filled our canteens or wineskins cold water. And there has never, ever, ever been a bass that tasted as good as, or no, not a bass, a trout that tasted as good as the mountain trout that I pulled out. Especially after a week of eating dehydrated food. in Israel. The mountains around Jericho, the Dead Sea, the River Jordan, and the faces of people who looked like Jesus looked. The little boy in Jordan, who was maybe this big, who was herding goats, and sheep. Nothing could capture that. My memory doesn't come close, and pictures can't do it. It was too much amazement for the camera. But what I do remember from all of those events, the people who shared in those moments, I remember consecrating the communion elements for the first time ever using grape Kool-Aid made from that mountain stream and really bad backpacking biscuits. I remember meeting new people in Tahoe, one of whom is moving from the East Coast to be appointed to a church in Michigan, and we will actually be able to see each other for the first time in five years. I remember the joy of learning. And in Israel, I remember the pain, not of the Via Della Rosa, not of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, but the pain on the faces of the Palestinians and the Israelis, who even then knew that living in peace was almost impossible for them. The Trinity helps us understand all of those pieces. God, who was bigger than the Creator. Jesus, whose path we are called to walk, even into difficult places. 
and the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of God that somehow makes it all work together. I learned a long time ago, don't try to explain the Trinity on Trinity Sunday. Just try to experience it. But as always, when I am in a moment of question, I go to my friend Frederick Beekner. One theologian I wish I had met and did not. And in his book, Wishful Thinking, he explains the Trinity like this. The much much maligned doctrine of the Trinity is an assertion that appearances to the contrary, notwithstanding, there is only one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit mean that the mystery beyond us, the mystery among us, and the mystery within us are all the same mystery. Thus, the Trinity is a way of saying something about us and the way we experience God. The Trinity is also a way of saying something about God and the way God is within God's self. For example, God does not need the creation in order to love something. Because within God's self, love happens. In other words, the love of God is love. Not as a noun, but as a verb. I'm not even going to understand the next sentence, but because we are talking about mystery, I'm going to share it, and I think one person who's sitting to my left and your right might get it. This verb is reflexive as well as transitive. (laughs) Okay, good. I'm so glad Joe understands. If the idea of God as both three and one seems far-fetched, look in the mirror someday. There is A, the interior life known only to yourself and those you choose to communicate it to. There is the visible face, which is some, in some measure, reflects your inner life. And there is the invisible power you have in order to communicate that interior life in such a way that others do not merely know about it, but know it in the sense of its becoming part of who they are. The first is God, the mother, the father, the creator. The second is Jesus, the son. And the third is the Holy Spirit. And yet, unless you have one of those trifold mirrors, when you look in the mirror, What looks back at you, who looks back at you, is clearly and indivisibly the one and only you. However we make our way into God, whether it's through the amazement of the creation, the wonder of the breath of the Holy Spirit moving among us, the amazement as we look at Jesus of Galilee, the horror of the cross, the joy of the empty tomb. However it is, you make your way into God. It is all part of one and the same. 
we experience God in so many ways. In wonder, in relief when a miracle happens, in aware of God's presence when the miracle that we ask for is not received. We see God in so many ways. On this Trinity Sunday, maybe the answer to the question, the answer that does not take away the mystery, but the answer to the question of who is who but the Lord. Thank you.
Our response to the gospel is found in the way we live our lives, in the gifts we share, the prayers we pray, the offering we give, and the many ways we support this church. Please read the announcements in the bulletin insert this week, and if you are watching from home, when they are sent via email early in the week, or if you forget, go back and check the email. It's all there. Uh, first off, an announcement regarding youth group. The youth group will resume our regular schedule, uh, which is meeting on the second Sunday of every month in June. So our next meeting will be on the second Sunday of June. The Tuesday evening Bible study with Pastor Nancy is studying The False White Gospel, Rejecting Christian Nationalism by Jim Wallace. We would love to have you join our conversation. The Zoom link is posted on the church Facebook page and emailed out early in the week. This week, we will continue to discuss chapter two. And even if you haven't read the book, if you're willing to listen to the conversation and join in, feel free to join us. Also, join us for Brownies and Bibles and a messy adventure every Wednesday from 4.15 to 5.30 at Hanson Park here in Michigan City. See the printed announcements or speak with Pastor Trish for more info. This is a great little park. All ages are welcome. The Children's Sunday School program can use more volunteers for teachers. To meet safe sanctuary policy, two teachers must always be present with children, which means our small group of volunteers rotates often. Please speak to Pastor Trish if you would like to be added to the list. There finally is an updated sheet available for the directory. However, we did not put Austin and Sylvia's email or phone number in it, so if you want it, pick up the sheet from the round table and then talk to them. And then when we update it the next time, we will make sure that is in there. There are also copies of the cross beams on the table ready to mail to our homebound members. If you plan to make a visit this week and would like to hand deliver one, please help yourself. And one last announcement, um, almost, is the May Give Back raised $180. Um, also, the flowers on the communion table today are the flowers that were not delivered two weeks ago in honor of Tom and Becky's 51st wedding anniversary. And Tom wasn't here last week, so they came today. Tom, I hope Becky isn't too upset that her anniversary flowers are two weeks late. It just extends the celebration. As the usher brings our prayer request to the front, may we sing our prayer song, Lord of all hopefulness. We will sing verses 1 and 2 as we prepare for prayer, and verses 3 and 4 following the Lord's Prayer. They can be found in your Faith We Sing books. Um, number 2197, Lord of all hopefulness. Number 2197. I will share with you the prayer requests that we have gathered this morning. 
prayers of thanksgiving for Chris Prohl's friend, Samantha, who is pregnant. Prayers for Pam Voss's friend, Jackie. She is in ICU after a horrible accident. And Betty Staples fell in her home last night and is at Franciscan. When I saw her this morning, she was grumpy. So all is good. So um, she hadn't had her coffee yet. And many hours after awaking, not having your coffee when you're Betty Staples is a challenge. Let's pray. God, our loving God, you are the surprise from whom all discoveries grow, the delight of whom each victory sings, the joy to whom all lasting pleasures flow the search out of whom all science springs, the truth who surfaces when all seems lost, the love who will not count the cost. Creating God, high above our understanding, redeeming God deep beyond our deserving, we worship your mystery. Inspiring God near beyond our perceiving. We worship your mystery. And in your mystery, we know that you will answer our prayers. Our prayers for those who find this a difficult day. For the families of those who gave their all, either in the field of battle, or because of the fighting they did. We pray for Betty. We give you thanks for a baby that is to be. We pray for Jackie. Oh, holy God, we pray for those students who have finished their school year and for those who are still waiting. May the last days of the school year for the Laporte system be days of peace. And may those students drive with extreme safety. As our community expands with our summer visitors, keep us safe. May there be peace. All of this we pray in the name of the one who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The stewardship way of life is the grateful response of a Christian disciple who recognizes and receives God's gifts and shares these gifts in love of God and neighbor. Will the ushers please come to receive our offer? Thank you, O oh God, for the gift of your Trinity. You don't leave us having to understand it all. You give us space for growth, for questions, for mystery. May these offerings that we have given share that love, that understanding, and that power with the world. Amen. If you'd remain standing in body or spirit for our closing hymn, it can be found in your hymnals, uh, number 593, Here I Am, Lord, number 593. As a reminder in the refrain, uh, the, we are changing I will go, Lord, if you lead me to I will go, Lord, where you lead me.
forth to dance with the trinity of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May that energy lead you into the world to share the good news that you are loved and the world is loved. Amen. Thank you.